Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today I'm in a 2022 Toyota Tundra. I'm driving the gas version right now back to the hotel, but I just finished my day. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what I did today. Yeah, I towed, I went off-road, I drove the gas and the hybrid versions both unladen. I'll show you what the limit it is of the interior. I have videos of that, I did double cab, I'm gonna show you chassis. I got a ton of stuff in this video and other videos I will link to above about this new Toyota Tundra. So let's go ahead and get started and all that right now. All right, here we go, we're on the road. I'm driving some highway with the uh, gas version of the Tundra. Now, um, what's interesting with this is that it's made a 10-speed transmission. It's got plenty of get up and go, right? I just, <laughs> right through the lane, right? As you'd expect from a twin turbo engine, you know, lots of get up and go. And I think it's interesting is, and the exhaust note is still there. Like, I'm sure I'm gonna check with some engineers. I'm sure there's some piping in the in the cabin, some fake sound or whatever, but I don't care. It sounds good, and that's all I care about. And it's interesting how good it sounds from a V6. Like when I had the power boost, I have the channel F50 power boost, it didn't sound nearly as good as the gas version of this does. Nor have I seen have I driven the hybrid as well, and I'll drive it later down today. That exhaust note in the hybrid is better than the power boost. So uh, I would say this is even better than the EcoBoost from Ford as far as an exhaust note, which is which is bizarre. Now, is it still a V6? Yeah, still a V6. It's not going to sound that great, but, you know, at least we get something out of it. Um, it's got lane tracing assist, helps sustain the lane. Stay on. I-35 North. Turn that off. Um, so, overall, as far as driving and handling, there's still a little understeer, as any truck will have, but he really dialed that in. Uh, with that multi-link coil suspension, the more rigid fully box frame, they really can dial in the handling better, uh, the bumps are even better, it rides. I think that's the biggest takeaway. So I owned a 2013 and I've driven every model year since 2013 and I the ride quality here is interesting. So um, you'd expect a good ride quality at a multi-link coil suspension like you say a Ram truck would have and this does not disappoint. The ride quality is really good. As Mike Spears alluded to, he doesn't want anybody to say this drives like a truck. It drives, uh, to me it's, Drives a little bit smoother, drives a little bit smaller um, than actually the size it is. It's still a big truck, um, but yeah, I would say the overall ride quality is more like what I would what I was saying before in different videos about how the TRD Pro rode better than the stock Tundra, and that's because of the off-road suspension. But I think now you get that ride quality throughout the lineup, throughout the different trim levels, without having to go the off-road soft suspension. So we're gonna do some towing later on today. I'll be curious to see what squat looks like with the with the coil link suspension back there and we'll just kind of see how the day goes. But I want to give you some, like I said, initial thoughts on just driving the 3.5 in traffic. Unfortunately, this is San Antonio, Texas. Traffic is everywhere, and so I can't really open it up, although I will be trying. Okay, let's go off-road. I have the Limited with the TRD off-road package. Now, this is kind of the sweet spot. This is something I'm looking at I actually would probably buy. I'm not always a big TRD Pro fan. There's just a lot more to that truck that I need to use on a daily basis. But I have downhill assist control, I have multi-train select, I have crawl control, and I have different drive modes. And so this is probably gonna be the sweet spot for me to give me that capability um, when I need it, when a blizzard happens, when I'm off-road to the farm or something and I need to get a little bit out of, out of a sticky, sticky situation, or a sticky situation, whatever I can talk this morning. So I'm in four low which we were just talking about. There's all these thoughts on 4Low, but the cool part with 4Low that people don't tell you is it turns off all the nannies, really, and so you just drive. That's the best part of that. Um, this is the San Antonio countryside. Just really some gravel. Apparently, just look, it's not such an aggressive course, but it's it just shows off some of the capability of this big truck. The prior generation Tundra had, was really pretty capable just because it had a lot of horsepower and torque in that V8. And so now you have these little bit more features that just make it a little bit more, I don't know, comfortable to drive. And this thing is like going crazy. It's got the, uh, it's got a really cool, the screen I'll show you in a minute where it shows the uh, camera. So when you're going through stuff, it gets, shows shows all around you, a bird's eye view. Uh, as soon as the, um, as soon as the indication pops up that you are having some problems, but let me go. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. 
I was like, oh yeah. I, I'm like, I turned that on, didn't I? Oh yeah. It, no more noise, right? I know. No more chatter. Da, da, right. da, 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 da. All right, so that's the big thing this year. The Tacoma made a lot of noise. It sounded like something was broken in when it was doing it. It just was the uh, ABS brakes and things were working so fast that it caused that noise. And one of the things Toyota did was they really refined that, took the noise out, and basically because other products came in the marketplace with their own version of trail control and crawl control and it didn't make any so sound. So this one's much, much better on the ears. And so like, you know, I'm just using crawl control and just going up this hill. And at any point, like I did down there, you can hit the gas and just override the crawl control, but or you just let it do its thing. I'm just I, all I'm doing is steering, and it is using the gas and the brakes to get me uh, up the climb without a whole lot of slippage, and it's I can adjust the speed as well. Um, usually, it's down to five, like up to like 10, 12 miles an hour. It's kind of usually the fastest it's ever gone. I, I'm doing I'm in I'm in crawl two, and I'm doing like two or three miles per hour. So, uh, you know, let me turn this up. So I'm on now crawl control high, and let's see. So you can see I take off. So I went through low, medium, high, and maybe not 10, 15. Maybe I'm gonna be, let's see, I'm still at, doing like five. Yeah, so okay, so low speeds, still low speeds. I, I, I don't know, I'm sorry. Off-road feels faster than you think um, than if you're on like a course. So I still got crawl control on. I'm just kinda, kinda steering, but I'm doing just five, so. Again, let me show you what's going on, on the screen as far as crawl, crawl control and things like that. So there's crawl control. You can see the speed there. This, uh, when that beeps, it shows me the camera. I'm gonna see if I can't get it to beep here in a second. Go next to this tree. No, it didn't beep. Beep, beep for me. Beep for me, truck. Beep for me. No, nope, guess not. So um, I'll try to get it to do it, but it, it will turn that off. So I can turn crawl control down here, here, and that turns it down. You can see I'm turning it down, turning it up. Okay, so that is how that crawl control works. And gosh darn it. Well, we'll get that. I'll get that on the screen soon. Okay, so I'm going down the hill, downhill assist control. Again, a little bit like crawl control, but this is for downhill. I'm just steering. The engine's actually really quiet right now. It's almost got that Jeep 4xE Wrangler kind of electric off-road driving. And so it's, it's, it's kind of nice. And so I'm just kind of cruising along like a Sunday drive, but off-road. Another thing I forgot to mention on the TRD off-road package though, is this comes with the rear locking differential. So, you know, this is really critical for even a truck of like this wheelbase to go a lot of rock crawling. It, before, when it didn't have the rear locker, you just use a lot of acceleration and you'd climb your way to the top and you don't always need it. But it is nice. It's a nice feature to have. And uh, especially in different situations you come into. So I got, you know, the locking rear differential. I got downhill assist control, which I'm using. I have crawl control, and I have different drive modes. I have multi-train select. Yeah, so lots of cool stuff. Okay, now it's time to check out a new system. Right there, see? Use downhill assist control, shift into four high. So what does that do? So if I put it in neutral, right? And I push up to four high, it'll start shifting me in the four high, right? I'm in the four high, I'm gonna go back to drive, and I'm gonna go here and hit downhill assist control. And so basically downhill assist control is like cruise control for going downhill. It works like crawl control in that it, it holds the speed up or it uses the brakes in the engine to make me go a consistent speed. So, on a downhill, like a pretty extreme downhill, off-roading, I can just put that on, take my foot off the brake, and it will hold me at a speed and take me down the hill. So it's less stressful. It's a cool feature. Most people don't use it, but I like it. Okay, let's go for a drive. I have a 2022 Toyota Tundra SR5. I have power extending mirrors, towing mirrors. I'll put some video on the screen here in just a second. It's really loud outside, so I'm just gonna kind of walk around and look at the outside. Okay, traffic's a little loud, but one thing to know, these are power extending right here. 
and they power extend out towing mirrors. They are heated, blind spot monitor, and there's a light. I think it's right here that shoots off and lights up everything behind you when you're backing this trailer up. So let's go for a drive. Okay, a few things to notice. No low leveling on the back. And so they purposely set this up with single axle because they want this to move a little bit. And they want to show how the suspension interacts with that. There's also a sway control in here as well. And there's other thing that's interesting is there's, I'm going to put it in tow haul mode and right there. And he said there's two different tow haul settings. There's tow haul and tow haul plus. So interesting that there's two settings for tow haul. Huh. So yeah, we'll get more details on those settings. Okay, so here we go. Kind of a high traffic area, so kind of go out fairly slow. Find my spot. Uh, this is the 3.5 liter gas, not the hybrid. These towing mirrors are awesome, by the way. Uh, always a big fan of towing mirrors. Uh, you don't need towing mirrors for everything, but they are just super handy. So people ask me all the time about towing mirrors, and I tell them the same answer. You don't have to have them but they are really handy if you do get them. And what I like in this case is you can get these tow mirrors and you get blind spot monitoring built in. You got power extending and folding and heat plus blind spot monitoring all in one package. A lot of times you do aftermarket stuff, things like this, you lose certain features because the mirrors don't have the plugins and the capability to be able to work with those. So Toyota has these mirrors uh, engineered, ready to go, which is really handy. So I'll make a wide turn here. Don't take anybody out. Okay, so that's 45 miles an hour. Um, yeah, I mean, there was, there's plenty of power to tow this stuff. I mean, look, other brands have been doing twin turbo V6s for a long time, not having problems towing things. Um, a lot of people actually like small displacement turbocharged engines because they like the more torque at the lower end, um, even though the turbos typically have to spool up a little bit, but they do like that those uh, torque, especially at altitude. Uh, turbos do have, play a benefit depending on your driving style and what you're doing, but they do have a benefit. So cruising around, again, this is just an eight to nine minute loop. I'm just trying to feel it. And uh, I would definitely, if I was towing this rig again, you know, I wouldn't set up this way. I'd do low leveling bars. I'd do all that kind of stuff to have a smoother, you know, towing experience. You really want that load not to move around on you at all. This isn't, it's not really moving. I don't feel pushed very much. Um, again, I don't have much wind. I'm going 45 miles an hour. That's the speed limit through here. So I don't have a whole lot of uh, tough towing conditions. Just some feedback. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so, oh, here we go. So coming up over here, I'm going to go up a really, looks like a steep incline. Uh, I'm going to say, I don't know, 5, maybe 10% grade. 45 miles an hour doing 55 there let me slow down yeah kind of bucking a little bit um again half ton is going to be a little bit different three quarter ton and one ton towing so here, here we go 45 miles an hour i'm at 2000 rpms and we're going up this climb to try to hold it at 45 miles an hour all right here we go here's the toughest part i'm holding i'm at 2500 rpms holding 45 miles an hour 25 rpms and up top. Now, if you missed a little bit part of the video earlier, this does have a transmission oil cooler, which is what I took out from a couple of different trucks of like 20 and 21 because they recalibrated with these new engines and trying to get that 12,000 pounds, they had to add the cooler back in to have for the horsepower and torque. This was a, it was necessary. For the, it's a J2807 standard, it's a towing standard. It's nerd towing stuff into the weeds and that stuff. But just know that this transmission is gonna be cooled with the transmission oil cooler. And uh, yeah, I'm going down. So I'm going down this hill, which is a pretty good, a pretty decent challenge. And I have a trailer brake. Okay. So trailer brake is set at half. Okay, set the trailer brake up for half. Because if I'm going down, I want to make sure the trailer brake's working with my brake so I don't burn my brakes up and coming down the hill. So yeah, I mean, I had plenty of power getting up that hill and plenty of power 
uh, plenty of control going down the hill. Again, tow the right way, put the sway bars on there, put the stuff on there. Uh, single axles, and the way this is set up is just notorious for moving around a little bit. So I'm gonna slow down, and then we'll make a left-hand turn here and go back. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna get a truck that has a double uh, axle maybe, I'm just depending what happens, and take that for towing, but you know, this is, this, this is gonna work for a lot of people. Will it replace the V8 and, and their people's minds? No, but once you drive it a few times, you get used to it, and you'll probably learn to adapt to this new world of small displacement engines that we're doing. That just, I mean, they get better fuel economy with V8, and they do about this, have the same power delivery towing, and I've been promised from engineering that this towing mile per gallon in the 3.5 liter V6 and the hybrid as well, um, or either one, has the same fuel economy that you were towing with the V8. So if that's concerning you as well, they say it's the same fuel economy. Okay, now I'm towing about 6,500 pounds of double axle. I did confirm that the, the single axle Airstream was about 3,500 pounds. So I'm, I'm double the weight. Um, I still just have a single ball hookup. I don't have anything crazy load leveling back there. I'm just double axle. Feeling the differences in suspension, how it's holding uh, this truck as far as how it's towing. One of the maybe annoying things of this drive program around right now is it doesn't look there's like there's any hybrid powertrains that are towing here today. It looks like we're just towing with the gas engines. A little um, sad. I'd like to tow with the hybrid too, but um, it's just what they have set up and what they have vehicles for. Uh, it sounds like to me that Toyota is doing the best they can to have even prototypes here. They still got some parts throughout the cabin that are pre-production. There's some smooth plastic. There's not any parts right now. <laughs> just, just a part shortage. It just, it's what it is. And so, um, yeah. So I mean, again, the 3.5 V6 twin turbo, uh, plenty of, of torque at I think it's 439. I'm going to say that probably wrong, but um, over 400 pound, feet pounds of torque and uh, foot pounds of torque. And yeah, so it's, it's a pretty good powertrain and uh, pretty decent as far as towing. I had to figure out, I had people shooting video while I walked by. <laughs> to say that. So, uh, there's a hill over here I did in my other video. Let's go ahead and get to that hill. We'll go up the hill and then we'll crest it and then we'll go down the hill. I do have tow haul plus engaged. And earlier in the video, I said put on the differences down below. Well, ha ha. Aha. Uh -huh. I asked the guy if he had the differences. So, two tow hauls, tow haul and then tow haul plus. And what he told me is, is that's because. When you had tow haul before, you would just, the truck assumed you had like a 10,000 pound trailer, just didn't know what kind of weight you had. And so sometimes you'd be hunting for gears because of different trailer weights. In tow haul plus, it anticipates like above four or 5,000 pounds, you have that heavier trailer. And regular tow haul, if you go less than four or 5,000 pounds, it'll act differently. So those two different modes kind of tell the truck to act differently depending on how much weight you have in, how much weight you're towing and it shouldn't hunt for gears as badly as a prior generation did based on the truck's system understanding a little bit more of what you're towing. Now, different brands like say Ford allows you to add trailers, which I thought there was a setting for this to add a trailer and you actually can enter in the details and so it sets up its transmission and uh, steering and its throttle response based on the weight of the trailer too. So, uh, based on the trailer length, I think in Ford's case, the trailer length, and I don't think I ever put in the weight. So the weight's an interesting thing. That's something we haven't seen before other manufacturers do. But damn, it makes sense, right? Why not put, why not tell the truck how much you're towing and let the truck's computer system make the change? And I went up the hill, I didn't stop talking. I just kept going, you know why? It just did, a, it went up the hill, no problem. So no concerns there going up the hill. And then I'm coming down the hill. I have the trailer gain, uh, trailer brakes engaged. And uh, yeah, going down the hill. The controller engages, to say. Yep, no problem. So, not that I anticipate any problems towing with this truck. Um, I towed the old 5.7 liter V8 many, many times. It's a beast. I know Toyota knows towing. I never thought there'd be a problem with that. I just want to get this truck in my driveway, hook it up to a, another camper, and go like 100 miles. And I want to see what the fuel economy is because I am curious. So that was a lot more stable. There was no issues there as far as swaying at all. The suspension handled it perfectly. A really smooth towing experience with that trailer, which is what I expected without any uh, concerns about losing it, things like that. Again, nice summer day. 
or oh, it's October, it's still a summer day here in Texas. Uh, no wind, I mean, a lot of factors involved, but good. Overall, good towing experience. Okay, I wanna kinda of show this on the screen best I can. It's gonna flicker a little bit because of the way the, the camera's working, but when you slow down at speeds, it, this is what it shows on your screen. When you get like five miles an hour under, I think it's five, I mean, maybe five or 10, whatever. When you slow down for a stop sign, is my point, is that it shows 360 degree around you, shows frontal camera, and so it's nice that you can like slow down and see what's in front of you that automatically pops on. That's cool. All right, this is the chassis of the Tundra. Now, the orange is everything that's new in the hybrid. So orange, orange, orange. More cooling, so transmission oil cooler hooked up. As you come around the side, you can see where the electric motor and battery combo are here. And what that does is it makes it a very parallel system. It's right past transmission, right past the turbos hooked all together so there's turbo actually here these are catalytic converters there's four catalytic converters two on each side but yeah this all this orange wiring all works together this is all the hybrid system when you do the non-hybrid they just well they chop that off and they move transmission forward that's all they're really doing transmission is different because the torque converter is in the front but electric transmission a little bit more with the 10 speed on the hybrid same transmission just software tuning a little bit differently Coming back here, this is the battery. This is below the seat. It is going to be your battery, your wiring, the fuel tank. There's two different fuel tank sizes, 32 gallon and a 22 gallon. And this is 32. Coming on the sides, we can see the multi-link coil suspension. The blue bars are your tra track bars that kind of go in. And then we have a bar that goes across the pumpkin. Right like that. And then there you go. So that is the underside of the Toyota Tundra. And again, everything else is the same except for the orange. That's a hybrid. Once you take that off, you have the same fully boxed frame, fully boxed, thick frame, really solid construction, and it's pretty sturdy. Definitely looks like a pretty strong looking truck underneath. Okay, now I'm in the Toyota Tundra hybrid. It makes a really interesting sound. I'm gonna try to get that on the camera for you guys. It's almost like a ghost, like, I don't know, cruising sound, because I'm in EV mode only. And so it's a really interesting noise. And oh, by the way, I just put it in reverse and backed up, and I did not have a beeping sound like the Power Boost has, the F50 Power Boost. I really wanna drive this around, so the engine just kicked on, and I wanted to see what the difference is. So in the earlier video, I drove the Limited off-road, which is kind of what I like. I mean, I, I like this Limited, setup i just don't know what is so different in limited versus sr5 yet because the build and price is not ready that online and i, I haven't got all the details quite in my head straight so excuse me on that one but i do um i do find this interesting so again hybrid was going to be a really interesting rollout with with uh, toyota here only in crew max you can only get the trd pro with the hybrid and so they're making some interesting choices how they're rolling this out and they're rolling out the hybrid second the gasoline first so just some interesting way of putting out but this has got the 583 foot foot pounds of torque at 2400 rpms interestingly enough the 3.5 liter twin turbo has the same torque at the has the same uh, rpms for its torque as far as max torque less torque in the 3.5 but at 2400 rpms and this is full torque at 2400 rpms so uh, i'm trying to get over here out of this uh countryside and get to yeah there we go so i'm going to get to a drive route and just do a quick little freestyle like i'm just gonna take it out for a little bit and just see what it's like on the road okay i'm at a full stop Got a little bit. Oh, there's a stop sign up here. It's trying to give you guys a little 0 60 taste. Okay, so wait for the stoplight. It's 10 speed automatic transmission in this. And I don't have a price, and they haven't announced pricing. I'm going to assume that the hybrid is going to cost more than the 3.5, but I just don't know the numbers. So I'm probably, my guess is I'm in a mid $50,000 truck, is kind of my guess at the moment. Here we go, green light. Oh. I got the tires to squeak. <laughs> there's 40. There's 50. And there's 60. Sorry. Car pulled over. So 
<laughs> that was fun. I got the tires a squeak on dry pavement. These tires have no water on them, but because it's got so much electrical power on demand and the way the hybrid set up, that and, and I'm in normal drive mode. Squeaking wheels. <laughs> That's fun. I could do that all day. Uh, yeah, and go buy new tires after a full day of doing that. Oh well, that's fun. So, yeah, a little turbo lag there when I really tried to get into it. Um, the exhaust does sound really good, and there is some fake exhaust noise coming in the cabin, which, frankly, this this day and age, I'm fine with. I mean, it's what it's going to be. We have to do small displacement engines because of emissions, and we're going to lose the V8 sound, but if at least it sounds better in the cabin, we'll be all set. So, yeah, you know, again, I stepped on it. The turbos kicked on, it went. Um, so I used to own an F-150 Power Boost on this channel. You find 30 videos on the Power Boost. Lots of videos um, that I talked about the power delivery on that was really good. Uh, this is different. This one, I, I can see Toyota was telling me that they like their system better. It's more parallel. It's more, they felt it was more seamless. They felt like their competitors maybe look more jerky in how they provided the power. Um, I've talked to a lot of a lot of F-150 owners who've had problems with their 10-speed transmissions uh, because they feel like it shifts too hard, um, and then they get re reprogrammed and it shifts just fine because it's a learning transmission. In this case, I mean, it, it's plenty of power for sure. Uh, I feel like it's a little more lag than I'd like, which is surprising. I thought it'd be more instantaneous. Um, but I would say that the power boost is smoother. I would say the power boost is a smoother power delivery. This drives more like a, more like the V8 to be frank with you. It has that more, that more of that V8 driving feel where it t usually takes a little bit, you know, I just, again, I get on here. So it takes a little bit. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. And it could be, yeah, it, this could be a learning transmission too, getting used to how I drive. But yeah, that was, that's, yeah, interesting. I mean, and that's when I get on it. Like when I, when I stay off of it, I have no problems there. Let me check the drive modes just to make sure I'm not in anything funky. So I'm in, I, I'm in normal drive mode. Oh yeah. See, I, I, I think you can almost see it on my, uh, watch my head on this video. You may be able to just to feel it. So I'm going to. I'm goofing off. I can get pulled over here pretty badly, but I'm just going to slow down. So I'm at like uh, 20. Yeah, do you, you see my head doing that? And that's when I get on it. So, I mean, I like it because it resembles more of a gasoline uh, V8 engine feel and it sounds good, but that's fascinating to me to, to do that in the hybrid. Uh, like it, again, because I owned the F50 Power Boost and that was more of a seamless takeoff I don't remember doing that in that truck so now I'm like doing my chin rub I'm like what was that truck I don't remember that truck at all I'd have to go back and watch my videos when I do like offline and, and speed when I was doing with that truck when I had it to see if I had the same reaction but I don't think I do so and I'm looking at the fuel economy on this I've been thinking around but when I got in it was like 17 or 18 miles per hour or gallon oh, what am I saying 17 18 mile per gallon so this is supposed to be 20 combined with the uh, straight 3.5 liter V6 twin turbo, the, the base engine. I'm gonna say this is probably gonna, if I wasn't screwing around, I'd probably get 23, 24, maybe, which is what EPA is gonna say on this. But in real, you, real, well, real life usage, I don't know if it's gonna be that amazing, which I'm, again, numbers aren't published. I don't have pricing. I don't, I don't have that information. I do, can tell you, 331 rear end um, throughout the lineup. Max towing package, doesn't matter. 331 rear end, and I can hear Toyota engineers tell me right now, we tested it, that's all that you need. You don't get any more benefit, it's just a bigger gear. You're just pushing more ring, ring. you don't, I hear it, but you take away the V8, and you take away the 430 rear end, and you give me one rear end throughout, it's just gonna feel a little funky. People are gonna wanna ask a lot of questions. And man, that turn signal's loud. Okay, there you go. There are all the details on the 2022 Toyota Tundra from this event I went to, the first drive. I can tell you that I actually did order this truck while I was here. I was putting an email into the PR, I put an email to marketing, trying to get this truck built by the end of the year. I'm gonna go limited, because I like heated seats and cooled seats. I'm gonna go with the TRD off-road package, because I wanna get the rear uh, locking differential. I want to get the 
um, the, the skid plates, I want to get the crawl control and downhill assist control and multi-train select. I want those features. And so I put an order in for that one. Yeah, it's. I think it's gonna be great. I hope I can get it. We shall see. And so there you go. Again, those are my thoughts on the 2022 Toyota Tundra. Hope you enjoyed this video. For more, check the video over here, website down below as always. Thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.